but I grew up very, very poor. Um, I mean, I literally ate out of garbage cans from behind restaurants and grocery stores, and actually it's a couple of neighbors. Um, but the poverty that I grew up in, it made me what I am today. I tell the story, I ate out of garbage cans. When I was 16 years old, I moved 17 times, uh, including staying in an orphanage home. You'll read all about that in the book. Um, I remember my, my mother hugging me three times. Don't even know who my father is. But all those bad things that were happening to me when I was growing up, I was very fortunate, and there's probably a couple of you in this room, I had four amazing teachers. And those teachers were, they were like my mother, they were my role models, they were my uh, inspiration. They really told me that the only way I'm gonna break the poverty cycle is through education. And that's how I broke the poverty cycle. Uh, I went on to Howard, as most of you know, to get my Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering. And then I had the great pleasure of going to the Dealer Academy in 1985, September 9th, 1985. I arrived in Hartford, Connecticut. I'd never been in the state of Connecticut one day before I came to Hartford to open my first dealership, which I bought from Pierce Buick. Some of you will remember that name. You'll be telling your age if you know Pierce Buick. But, um, I bought Pierce Buick, and three years later, I bought um, the GMC truck. Three years after that, I opened the Saturn store, and in 1998, I formed my current company, March Hodge Automotive. And in 2008, we had 21 car dealerships along seven states along the East Coast. There are a lot of books about rags to riches. The reason why I really want you to read the book, I want you to read about what I, well, I was doing it here in Hartford. A lot of people don't realize how much charity work I was doing here in Hartford. But I'm doing it on a much bigger uh, worldwide stage now running the foundation. I want you to read the book to see all the things um, that was accomplished throughout the book um, for my charity work. Um, I have two missions for writing this book. I want to inspire the people that, what I call at the bottom of the mountain, where I used to be. I always say I was one of them. I want to inspire them to realize you don't have to stay at the bottom of the mountain. There are so many people in this world, so many organizations, so many foundations that are actually uh, wanting to help people at the bottom of the mountain get off the bottom of the mountain. But the other set of people I want to inspire is those people that, what I call the top of the mountain. You know, when I got to the top of the mountain, I probably buy two or three or four Lamborghinis every year, and I never drive them. I give the money to homeless shelters. I think everybody in here want to know what you do. I want to get a deal on Well, uh, the, 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 the greatest thing about the GM Dealer Academy, um, there's a division of General Motors like Saturn, Buick, Chevy. There's a separate division of motors holding that all they do is loan money to people to start car dealerships because they realize that Underprivileged people, minorities, didn't have the capital, that big word capital, to start a dealership. So it's a program, it's a seven year program. Uh, I'll, I mean, I'll tell you, I don't know if I put it in the book, but it's been all over the Hartford Current. I had $120,000. They gave me one, two, what was it, Claire? Two point, I remember at the, uh, Claire's was my, Claire? Raise your hand. Hey. Claire was my controller for that operation for 22, 23 years. But she was at my first signing. And I, how do you write 2.3 million uh, uh, on the check? But they, I had to come up with 120,000. They loaned me 2.3 million. It's a seven year buyout. So, when I was making profits, I couldn't spend it. Every profit I made, I had to go and buy a portion of their stock out. It's a seven year program. Um, I had the, one of the fastest buyouts of Motors Holding. 
I bought them out in 31 months. Now, you was a poor man. How did you afford to go to Howard University? Uh, that's in the book, too. No, uh, really, uh, it's a good question because it's like the only reason, not the only reason, one of the main reasons why I'm standing here. Okay, imagine this, senior in high school, March, the senior of your high school year. What are kids doing? They've already taken the SAT probably twice. They're literally getting ready to go off and do college business, right? All you with kids with uh, college kids? Senior year of my, March of my senior year, I had not applied to any college. I didn't think I, I could afford to go to college, which is probably what where you're coming from. How the heck did I afford to go to college? I was on the swimming team. Uh, a lot of you know I went to Howard on the swimming scholarship, but I was at swimming practice and something told me to go home early that day. And I walk into the house. By the way, I stayed with my sister. She had nine children. So there was 13 of us in a house from that wall, maybe to that wall, right there. Mm -hmm. that, that's the house that all 13 of us lived in. But that day, my sister's husband's best friend, and by the way, his, na his name is Moses. Moses appeared in my house, Moses Johnson, and he says, hey, Tony. I said, hi. I, I never met him who he was. He says, Mary tells me that you're taking all these hard classes in, in high school. I took chemistry to and physics to and calculus in high school. And so I get straight A's. And he says, what college are you going to? I said, I'm not going to college. Guess who Moses Johnson happened to be? The best friend of my my sister's my sister's husband's best friend. He happens to be the dean of admission of Howard University. And I almost didn't even go home that day. You talk about defining moments in your life. If I hadn't gone home, I wouldn't have went to college. I I mean I, I have faith in me. I probably would be here talking to you about some other career, but defining moment. In, in my life as I went home early from swimming practice and Moses Johnson was there and he said I'm going back to my, it was only there for two days I'm going back to my office I'm going to send you an application I want it back in my office in two days get accepted full scholarship along with my swimming and that's how I got to college if you drive a GM car you probably have touched my invention I was the I have a patent on the first memory seat in any General Motors car in the world. So when you move your seat, you push the button one or two, I have a patent on the memory seat. Um, remember the old Cadillacs where the trunk used to close? Automatically, you didn't have to slam it. The switch that cuts it off, I have a patent on that. And if you ever move the seat adjuster in any General Motors car, I have a patent on the six-way seat adjuster switch.